going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Lone Wolf Podcast. I'm your host, Wolfson. And today's episode, we're going to talk about the worth of doing remix songs. Are they really worth it? Or it's better off that you just stick with making originals? Lately, due to the pandemic that we're all facing right now, I mean, shit, I'm noticing that a lot of labels and a lot of artists are doing all sorts of remix competitions to for any up-and-coming producers that are, they want to take this opportunity and shine a little bit, you know, taking the little guy and putting it out there, you know, just giving them the chance or or discovering the new next big thing, the, the next big artist here and now. Now, however, I have mixed feelings about this because it's not the first time I've seen this before and I will explain the difference between doing a remix and originals. What holds more value the truth behind these remix competitions to all these labels and artists, my final thoughts and recommendations to what to do in this type of scenario. I'm going to make this episode a little bit short, simple, and straight to the point. Isn't all my episodes like that? I don't know. You tell me. Anyways, be sure to like and subscribe for your weekly episodes at the Lone Wolf Podcast for SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and as well as the YouTube channel at LoneWolfPod.com. That's LoneWolfPod.com, where you can check all my latest episodes. You can also follow me at any of my social medias at Wolves and Music for any recent updates, any of the new clips that we have, and whatnot. You can also add me on anything and, you know, say, hey, Wolves, check this out. And you can also give me recommendations on what to talk about the next episode. That's the power is on you guys. You guys let me know and I will talk about it. So without further ado, let's get started. This is the Lone Wolf Podcast. Boom. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Lone Wolf Podcast. Today's episode, we're going to talk about the worth of doing remix music. Are they really worth it? Or, you know what? Just stick it with the originals. Now, I have been noticing for the past couple of months, and most most recent, um, people are just throwing out remix music. Obviously, because of the pandemic that we're facing, there are a lot of up-and-comers or producers alike got nothing else to do except to make music. And that's awesome. That's beautiful. Take that opportunity. Not everybody has the luxury to actually make music at the, at the right time. And right now, even though it's um, on dire circumstances that we're actually doing music, and sometimes we don't get motivation out of it, but... At least you're right now doing something and not feeling like my my whole day got wasted. And it's amazing. Go for it. Do some of these musics. Do some of the remits, man. These labels and artists are throwing out competitions left and right like it's crazy, you know? But that tells me a lot of things of why they're doing this very, very, very often now. Back then, yeah, they, they've done it before. Even even when I started out, I've seen a lot of these remix competitions. But unfortunately, it all boils down into several things. And it all boils down to the level of production that you make for that remix and your following. A lot of more, like probably like, yeah, like if you know somebody, you know somebody that actually has a factor in it. That can swing your odds in favor and can get you elected very quickly. Yes, shit like that does happen. In which if you have if you know somebody that knows somebody about who's hosting this remake competition and you fuck with them very often, they can actually potentially help you win your chances of any of these competitions. Believe it or not. And that happens more often than ever. Which is why I don't do any of these remix competitions now. Not to say that they're not bad. Obviously, they're doing it for the right reasons, you know? And the right reasons is to shine the Nets person. Let the Nets uh, Skrillets or the Nets Virtual Riot or the Nets Excision come out or the Nets Sunboy, wherever it is, you know? Let the Nets um, 
up and coming become the next new thing. And that's awesome. Let's give that support because we barely have that support. Honestly, people always throwing now originals out there and they never stick. And none of these labels ever want to fuck with it. So what's the best chances for all these people that they try to make it to the industry through music? Remix competitions. That's their small little open window for them. That's their only chance in, in the mindset. That's the only chance for you to get in. That's not the only way to do it, but it is a path to do it. And it does help you in the resume and in the later future releases. You know, like you don't want to release a song and you know the song, like no bullshit. The song you made is good. Like it's goddamn good. Not like, oh yeah, my song is good. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's hot. Like, no, no, there's a difference between that. If you know your song is that good and you pitch it to these blocks, these blocks were like, ah, I don't know. It's like, well, I actually entered the remix competition for so-and-so and I actually ended up in the top 10. Oh, interesting. Ooh, can, I, can we hear the remix? Oh yeah, sure. Here it is. Oh, okay. Okay. We can make, we can make a deal with you. Like you bring some, you bring people, you bring, you know, crowd and plays and views and whatnot. All right. We can release your son in our, in our blog. Basically that helps out, believe it or not. And how the hell do I know this Wolfson? Um, I've done this before and it has worked out and not just me, big other well-known artists have done this, and especially artists that I know personally have done this before. Now, what are the difference between making a remix and an originals? Like, isn't one more valuable than the other? Yes, it is. Originals are much more valuable in my opinion. Others can be, can differ. Arguments can argue me that no, like they're equally the same. It's your song out there. You created the song. Well, technically, the remix, you didn't create the song. You just added up a new flavor to the an or, already existing song, technically. But yeah, I guess in a sense that you can say that in a remix uh, song, you're actually, you know, building something brand new, um, a new taste of the original concept. And it's all came from you. That's like, all right, cool. Okay, I, I get it. But I don't know, man. I stick with the originals, man. And I heard and I had this advice from someone that I do not like. I despise this guy because all he has ever done is always give me shit. And he was an instructor at the at my school at SAE. However, let him be a, a shitty person. He does definitely is good at what he does and he definitely does bring good advice once in a while and one of the advices is that don't do remits stick with the originals focus on originals that's the advice he gave me and you know i was like should i take his his warning like this is the same person that told me like no you should stick with one genre craft that genre make that genre your bitch you know master your genre in which I don't have a problem with that. I do have the problem that you're you shouldn't limit yourself of doing one genre. Like you should be happy to do multiple genres. Like you should have the ability to do more if you want to do more. Like if you want to do more, go experiment other genres and whichever you think that it's actually makes you happy and makes and makes and you're good at it, bro, just stick go for it, man. Don't just stick with one genre. Obviously, there's artists that stick with just one genre. That, absolutely. There are uh, those artists. That's why they're well-known big guys. But then there's other artists, a.k.a. Nitty Gritty, my boy. Shout out to you. He's a multi-genre guy. Like, he makes the sickest dubstep. He makes the sickest feature bass songs. He makes the sickest trap. He makes the sickest house songs. I don't even like house music and I fuck with his house like and he gave that same advice to him and nitty gritty went like, oh, yeah, just stick with one. Drink. OK, watch me, watch me. And he proved them wrong. He did the same thing to me. And it's like, just stick with house. All right. Watch me. What did I do? Dubstep, bass house, trap, mumma, mid tempo, melodic dubstep. And shit, what other genres did I did? I know it's not six. I know it was a, another seven. Pause. Sorry about that. 
Keep in mind, people, I live in an apartment complex. And because I live in an apartment complex, there are once in a while some fire drills that do happen. And security... Son of a bitch. Security often wants to let everybody know that we're on a fire drill or let everybody know it's like, oh, yeah, there's a fire happening in which it's never the case. It was just a false alarm. Yes, safety precautions. However, it fucks up my time on this. So I apologize for this. Anyways, I don't know what other genres have actually messed around because I know in house music, there's like super... There's a lot of genres. Oh, yeah. Fucking drum and bass. Fuck, yeah. I've never released one, but I have worked projects on it. And I feel happy about that. You know, you never let anybody tell you like you should and you should. You, you sh what you can't. Son of a bitch. Thank you for ruining my episode for the shortest time ever. Fuck. Anyways. Yes. I've did all those uh, various genres. I've released some of them, absolutely. And then there's some that I haven't released them, and I'm hoping to release them soon in the future in my next album. It's a short album, so it's not going to hope up. It's just an album. I, I, I was going to be an EP, but I ended up making an album. Originals, baby. Stick with them. Ah, anyways, so yeah, it's the same person that told me and told Nitty Gritty. He's like, don't do remixes. Stick with originals. And yet, Nitty Gritty has done so many remixes in which it most of them just like give them the most highlight of them all in his career. Like some of his remixes are like the most gnarliest shit I've ever heard. And to this day, if I have a DJ, I have a, if I can DJ or tour, I will play them. Absolutely. Anyways, that's why I was a little bit on the fence. It's like, oh, just stick with originals and not do remixes. But no, man, like what the fuck? I was kind of in the fence. But he gave me a nice explanation. He was nice at me because it was one of my shows. And he was like, I'm proud of you. You're actually doing your stuff. You're doing well. You know, when is the next time you're releasing a song? I told him, it's like, oh, I'm, I'm releasing a remix next month. And then next, the other month, I'll release an original. It's like, no, don't waste your time on remixes. Just do originals. I'm like, but man, why not? Why can't I just like, are these remixes? gonna pay you are they paying you to do remix songs no they're free there you go stick with the originals because at least with the originals you get something out of it and i think that was the tipping point in which i was like oh shit he may have a point so what's the whole point of doing these remix competitions and he gave me a nice little explanation i couldn't believe it but because i've already participated a couple of uh, remix competitions in which i end up from being the top 100 out of a thousand to the top 50 to the top 10 and the top five. I ended up third place on one of them as a runner up. And I noticed that it's what he said. And it sucks. What he said was that most of these remake competitions are not worth it. Usually they don't they don't have a it's not it's not a hundred percent guarantee that you will win. You could be first place on a competition, but it's not guaranteed the slot for you to win you the management the label the artist must like it as well even if you're number one and they have to like you as well and they have to see the following and see what kind of pulls you do and what what usually does happen often is that you got a second place guy in the charts winning the first prize and then i'm and then i'm like what the fuck like i i did all the i did all everything like my song is top number one and and I got all these followings. They're all played. Nothing is bought. Nothing is, you know, everything's was shared every day. Made sure to like this. Made sure to play this. Blah, blah, blah. I'm number one. Why am I not picked up? It's like I'm picked up as third place or fourth. It's like it's because the other people that I was in competition, they have a better following than I do. And some of their managers know their reps from the artists and the labels. And they got good relations. And they're going to go in favor with them. Unfortunately, that happened. And you see that very often. People don't realize that, but they it does happen, especially on these original competitions like the Discovery Project from from EDC and Insomniac. At first, it was it was legit, but then it became bogus. It became bogus 
for the reasons that I noticed that people who were winning have like 10,000 followers or 8,000 followers, 20,000 followers. And it's like people who has been established in the industry, people who are already like they're or, they're not up and comers. See, the difference between an up and comer and an established one is that an up and comer doesn't have any following, doesn't have that much of a fan base. It only has like a few thousand followers and his music is re- outreaches his following. That's an up and comer. An established artist is that you already have a, a fan base and you get your your place on a on a regular basis for every time you release a song. So if you have 8,000 followers, you're definitely going to have like 10,000 plays or eight or 15,000 plays or or more depending where you're releasing. Even on even on those established artists, they do release songs on labels. Like labels are being releasing their music in there. So obviously they got the support right there. An upcomer doesn't have a label to be releasing a song. They they only have 5,000 followers. They have 1,000 followers. They have nothing and they only get like what 3000 followers 1k 2k 3k 4k it doesn't reach that much until it's been released on a label see that's the difference these original people from the discovery project choose people like not nah, and you know what no nah, i'm not going to throw shades i'm not going to throw names because i like some of these artists i like listening to them but let's say that 10k follower that's been released on monster cat and has released on other lesser known labels or medium to known well labels yet they want the discovery project they get get the chance to win how the fuck bro the whole point of the discovery project is not to discover an established artist that's right now making moves and making some noise no it's to discover the lesser known the ones that nobody knows that nobody has ever heard of and they pop up with this song and it's like holy shit this is that's not this kid needs to be highlighted this kid needs to be put up there so people can listen to it that's how it was in the beginning and then somewhere in the in, in the middle i don't know what happened let's just focus on that and that what happened was that they got reps they got management that they know people that know some people that know some people fund a little bit of money here and there and boom they're in the discovery project unfortunately that's how it happened believe it or not that's exactly how it happens with remix competitions. It's the sad truth about remix competitions, you know. Difference between a remix and an original is that originals it w- it was created by your own self. You did it. It came out out of the thin air, and remix it was it's an, a new idea of an original concept. Basically, it, there's there's no there's not much to lock up. That's not much, you know. Difference. It, you're still creating something that came from you, but only the difference is that one is actually completely new and nobody's heard about it. And the other one is like it's already been heard. They just want a new direction of that one. See how far it can be pushed to its envelope. You know, what holds more value between a remix and a original, especially on these remix competitions or original competitions, whatever they are, whatever the fucking competitions are out there. You know, I'm going to get to the, a little bit more with the co- remix competitions that have been popping out lately and i've seen the winners and i'm just a little bit shocked you know um at the end of the day originals hold much more value than making a remix absolutely guarantee anybody who tells me that a remix holds as equal as a original fuck you bro you're a dumb fuck original always gonna be much more valuable than a than a remix because like i said it before an original it's a new concept of yours that you just created something brand new you just created that nobody has heard and you're putting it out there and then a remix is is that you're just changing the genre the drop or or the new the concept of the original into into your own flavor that's what it is if if the remix if they're paying you to do a remix, oh shit, I go for it. Don't yeah, like go let it go for it. If they're paying you to do a remix, you yeah, you take them you shut up and take take the money, man. Do the fucking uh, remix and make it into something uh, big and gnarly. But if they're not paying you and you're just doing it for free, um <sighs> I'm sorry, it, it, it doesn't hold that much value. It doesn't hold up. I mean, yeah. I have I do have like a bunch of remixes, but if you notice it, the most latest remixes I've ever done are from my boys, Mode Step. Shout out to Josh and Pat. And those are my boys. Those are the remixes I will do because I'll I'll be more than happy to remix a song for this. Just for the thrill of it. Just for the 
just to the fuck of it. Just fuck with it. I'm not expecting any promotions. I'm not expecting to get signed. I'm not expecting anything. I just love remixing their music, period. That's, and if you notice, I haven't released a remix in a long time. The last original I've I released was probably in October. Hopefully at the end of this year, I can release my album or singles, whatever I can get out of it. Yep. Um, you spend more time on an original because it's much more creative and you, you're literally putting your heart and soul into this and you're hoping for people to like it. I, even though I don't, I, long time ago, I said in the, in the, in the previous episode of Celts, shout out to you, brother. I don't expect instant gratification anymore. I'm releasing any songs. When I release a song, fuck it. I don't give a fuck if you like it or not. It's for my own pleasure, but it. It has a, but every song that I'm going to be doing right now or am doing and about to release have put my heart into it. I have put my soul in. And that's a lot of time and sacrifice that you put into. So obviously it's going to hold much more valuable because you're, you are in it. Like this is you. This is what made you. You're part of this versus in a re remix. You have. You could actually do a remix in one week, and I've done it. It could take up a month. It could take up a week, two weeks. Remix songs are easy to build. I don't know why people make it very like, oh, no, it's very hard. It's like, no, you, it's it's not that hard. Like, the idea is right there. Just go a different direction to that. They give you the stems. They're already giving you a heads up. Like, if they already give you the sense that all you got to do is just fill up the blanks and filling up the blanks is the easiest shit ever. Because we wish as a producer, we wish that in our originals, we have our fill up the blanks in our sessions. Most of the time, the fill up the blanks are right here in the head. We don't have that concept until we put out our concept of what we want. We don't have a something that is easier for us to like. Yeah, we could just. All right. This is where I do. This is what I do. With that. No, a remix. With the stems, it's already like, oh, okay, so I can put the drop right here. I can put the drop right here. And then I'll just doodle something right here. Take some of the original stems right here and resample it or make something like fucking easy. It's not that much to process. It doesn't take you months to make it doesn't take you months to make a remix. If it takes you, if it takes you more than one month to make a remix, maybe this is not for you. Maybe remix music is not meant for you. Remix songs are meant to be released sooner rather than later it is what it is you know it's not supposed to take a month or two or more just to release one remix songs like no and originals if if it takes you more than one year to finish one song like maybe music production is not meant for you or you haven't learned enough that that you're comfortable making a song per month because normally a producer will make a song per month normally Fuck, my, my boy Needed Greedy, I believe he's a Terminator. He's a Terminator because he can whip up a new session and have it by the end of the week. Like the whole basic of that song. And then the whole, and then the rest couple of weeks is just mix master te technical stuff and probably make a better uh, version out of it. And before you know it, that song is just ridiculous. I don't know how he does it, but it's ridiculous. Anyways, back to this. Yes, what holds more value is making original songs than remits, hands down. Some of the stuff, it's not, I will say, it's, I will say, yes. Sometimes remit songs and these remit competitions and whatnot, and whenever our artists release a stance for free, just, and, you know, play, mess around with it, it comes up with a motivation. Yeah, you get motivated out of it because maybe there's a song that you love so much all of a sudden, the artist is releasing the stems of that song that you love. And you always want to like, man, what would it be? Man, it would be dope if, if there's a, like a different take out of it, if I can do something about it. Absolutely. That's straight up motivation, inspiration right there and there. That you can do something about it. And maybe, maybe the artist can notice me. And if the artist can notice me, he, maybe he will repost it. He'll like it. He'll comment or something. Maybe he will ask me for more music. I don't know. Maybe the, those are the chances, but it's a 50 50 gamble. Absolutely. It has happened in which artists well known have liked and reposted my songs or tweeted about it. 
Yeah, and I, 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 I grabbed some attention. And w- once in a while, they ask me for something. You got any songs? And I'm like, yeah, I got some. I'm like, no, nah, man, I'm sorry, man. Podcast. This is my new thing, you know? But it, it's... It, but don't let that be as of, like, your end, your end goal when you're making that remix song. Don't let that be your end goal as of, like, I hope I get noticed by, by the original artist. I hope I, the label notices. I hope somebody notices. Don't go with that mindset. Just do it with the mindset like, oh my God, I want to do a, a different take out of this. Let me see what I can do and blah, 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 blah. And that's it. Do it because you want to. Don't do it because I hope I get something out of b- behind this. Like, no, no, no. Do it because you want to. It makes you happy. And just like, boop, there you go. I don't care. That's the only mindset that you should have when you're making a remix. Let alone the originals, obviously. But when it's a remix, you shouldn't put too much effort on it. You shouldn't put too much pressure on yourself for it. It's just a remix. It's the song is out there. It's free. The stents are free. You're not winning anything behind it. Only people will say like, "Bro, I love this version that, than the original." Nice job. Good job. Okay, cool. But don't spend much. Just do the fucking remix. And that's it. If that's the instant gratification that you want. But if you don't want that and you're expecting something be more than that, then I got news for you, buddy. Like, unless you're super, super good at making music, they're not going to notice you. And no matter how many times you try to tag them on Instagram and Twitter, it's going to annoy them even more. They may check it out. They may like the post, but they're not going to listen to it most of the time. Another another reason why I believe remits, remits is like, Nah, they're not worth it, you know. But again, in back to the motivation, maybe making a remix can motivate you on your next original project. Or let's just say that you made a song out of the remix and then you feel like, man, this is way too good to be a remix. Take the fucking stems out, make it an original. Boom. You just basically got a new original song. By taking out the stems. It can serve as a motivation. I'm not saying I'm not saying that doing remix songs is a waste of time. Well, in my head it is. But I'm not just saying that. I'm going from both sides. And I'm giving you guys my perspective on both sides. And a flip of the coin of each one. Like, here's the more value on the originals. And here's the more value on the remix. Like, I personally do not do these remix competitions because the reasons I mentioned for you guys earlier. But that's just me. It could be a different story for you. Maybe you want to do it, but it's not a not it's not a good route to go if you're trying to get yourself noticed because it doesn't work like that unfortunately. Just recently the disciple recording, shout out to those guys, um released at a remix competition like a couple months ago, like probably it was like June, mid June around there. And the submission was like last week and they announced the winners last week when i saw all the winners i was like holy shit that's good good for them and then i started seeing some comments some some you know concerning comments because it was like wait what these comments were just basically saying like of course only the people who has released on labels will win the competition i was like oh shit so i took a look at the winners i look at the following i first the first thing I did is listen to their songs, judge by my standards, whether they're good or not. For people that I've never heard in my damn life, they're they're pretty good. Yeah, they're pretty good. And then I started looking at their uh, profiles. And then I look at their SoundCloud profiles. And it's a good thing I didn't enjoy it. Because <laughs> half of these are literally up-and-comers and the other half are already... Is, established artists that have been releasing songs from multiple labels from various labels maybe lesser known labels but already have like they already have a foot in the in the ground on the industry versus the other half that never have ever touched the industry and then they managed to do this and now they're like oh my god i want to do this yep i knew it i don't know whether they the reasons i said about remix competitions earlier this episode I don't know how they did it on, on this competition. I know how other people have done competitions. I don't know how they did it. Based of how they did it, they did it because they believed that the songs were, were actually very good and they're very worth releasing. I have nothing against it. 
you know what? It sucks that half of these people are already released on various labels and they could have chosen lesser known people. But if them songs are good, it sounds as good. I mean, for for their, for a remix competition. I'm against it, but that's them. And I don't know how they did it behind the scenes. I don't know how they actually do it. I'm not throwing anything out there. I'm not calling them out. Nothing but respect to those guys. And you know what? I support them for the fact that they said in themselves and the rules like, hey, if Skrillex wants to join in, hey, you better strap yourself up. And I know there was a lot of, a lot of well-known established artists that want to remix. And sometimes I say to those established artists, like, dude, what the fuck, bro? Like, don't do it. Like, let these kids who are not well-known have a chance, have a shot at least. But you, if you decided to join in, obviously everybody's going to choose you because you're fucking, you're, you're, you're this so-and-so. Like, bro, leave that alone. But obviously, they put it on the rules. Like, if Skrillex decides to do a song on one of these remixes and him better strap yourself. It's going to happen. They should have not put that rule. They, at least they could have put that. Uh, they could have put a, a rule. It's like if you're above 5K, you shouldn't join this. But then again, that's being biased and that's targeting. So they had to put it in some sort of way of general. That's fine. That's fine. But I didn't like the fact that some other big well-known artists are trying to pitch in in this remix competition. It's like, dude, you already got a couple of remixes and get paid for those remixes and you release songs on different labels. What the fuck are you doing, bro? You're ruining the chances for all these kids. You know, I digress. Anyways, there's not much to talk about. I'm going to wrap this up very quickly. My final thoughts is um, I, I literally I would rather put more emphasis on making originals than making remixes. Making a remix is cool once in a while, you know, because if you put in more much effort on a remix songs for more than one to two weeks, that's my that's my standard. Um, then at that time you shouldn't put much energy on it, and you should switch that remix into an original. I will hold more value on originals. In fact, I will follow. I can't believe I'm following his words, but yeah, I will follow his words and don't just make remix songs. Just stick with originals like that holds much more value than anything i'm not saying that you should do it this is my opinion this is my perspective i i recommend not to do it not to focus on it focus on you making your own craft but if you want to do a remix you're more than welcome to do so and if you're uh one of these well and well let me re retrace that if you want to if you're one of those people that you rather do a remix because you're good at making remixes and you get a following a much bigger following on making remix songs then by all means you're a remixer go for it go for the remix if that's what gets your instant gratification go for it if that gets you happy go for it if that just go for it go for it if you want to be a remixer that's fine there's nothing wrong about it remix it songs and probably once in a while they'll they'll hit you up it's like Can you remix a song hey yeah that's fine but i will just stick with the originals because again these competitions, the Disciple recording competition was probably the only comp truthful competition I've ever seen in a long time. And I say truthful because they actually did say certain things, but they actually support the little people. I always say that the Disciple is always uh, part of the community. They're always a community label. They always there for the community. They're always there for their people. They're always listening to others. Like the artists interact with their fans all the time. Like I love that label. I love that label. Maybe one day I'll release with them. Maybe. Who knows? Anyways. Yeah. Disciples is probably the only one that I know up till now that's been truthful and been saying like, yeah, these are guys that are, they when they do remix competitions, they're very legit. Like, yeah, if you guys want to try it out, then you go for it. Go with them. Probably it's the only one that I know that you should go with them. Even though half of the others like I that I've heard of, and now that I'm seeing their names or saw seen those, so it's like, oh wait a minute, I have that song. Oh, like wait a minute, I have heard of that. I believe, like, damn, bro, like, like give it to the little people. Don't give it to these guys that already got labels. But then again, maybe, maybe, maybe because it's a diff, they're different songs. Maybe the only good one was that song. So I get it. So I respect that. That's fine. 
versus other remix competitions, mostly all performed by the Discovery Project, um, Insomniacs, and um, what's the other? Wavo? Yeah. Fuck you, Wavo. Speeding records, they do re um, remix competitions all the time. I would not pay more attention to those guys. Those guys and any other outside, it's all about who you know, how much following you got, and obviously, the whole product is like, your song has to be the shit. Has to be the shit for it for you to be considered. But if it's half ass, if it's good, if it's the shit, if you already got two of the two of the first ones that I mentioned that you got your followers like like more than five thousand followers, and you got people that know some people that know some people that can hook you up, then you have the chances to win a remix competition. Meaning that those guys are just fake. All business at the end of the day. It sucks. That's why I'd rather stick with the originals. I'd rather stick with just making music, making my own original concept and release to these labels or self-release it. However you, however you feel, however I feel, actually. I'd rather do that. I'd rather spend my time and energy on that than spend the um, remits. But then again, once in a while, if I do a, excuse me, if I do a remix, I'll use it as a motivation to make an original. If I end up making the remits way much more faster and much more sick then i will immediately drop the remix take all the stems out and just make them make it original and i already got the basis out of it i just need to fill out the blanks and boom that could be served as a purpose so recommendations that's one of the recommendations actually if you ever feel like you're in a rut and you want to make a uh a song but you don't have the like you know like the motivation out of it take one of the stems of a of a of a remix or a remix competition or or any other song that has stems out of it or an acapella, make a song out of it and then delete the stems out and then just fill up the song with whatever you feel like, whatever you want to put in there. And there you go. You got yourself a song. You did it less than a month. It happens. I've done it plenty of times and that's how I get my motivations. That's how some of these songs are that I'm doing right now. It, like, holy shit, they're sick. I recommend that I will stay away from remix competitions as much as possible. If you're if you're a remixer and you love doing remix songs because of instant gratification, by all means, go for it. But you're not gonna get far away from it. Um, some have, some are, some have, not all. And at that point, you it's better off if you just make it original. If you're putting that much effort on a remix, you, you can use that same energy and effort on making it original. It's not. It's not that hard. It's basically right there. Out, oh, sorry. Um, so I highly recommend to stay away from these remix competitions. The only ones I will recommend is the disciple competition. If they do another re competition, a remix competition, or any other artist do a uh, remix competition, or they release some of the stems or acapellas, I highly recommend you go with them. Those are the only ones that I know that they're legit, one hundred percent legit. Any other competitions like the Insomniacs, like the Wavos, like the Speeding Records, and any others, I stay away from them. It's a waste of fucking time. Because most of the time, well-known established artists are the ones that are going to win, believe it or not. I mean, take a look at the record. Look at the records. Just look at the remix competitions. They're still there. Look at the past winners. And look how many followers they got. And look how many plays they get on each songs. And look where all the, uh, all the releases. Like, it's right there. Like, you can tell, like, you can put two and two together and you can tell like, holy shit, this is rigged, guaranteed. And it sucks that they told me that, but it's a good thing that they told me that because that way I stay away as much as possible for these competitions. It's just focus on just making the originals and that's it. And I love it. I love the concept. Um, one last recommendations. Um, if you're putting too much effort on a remix, just put that same effort on original. Like, don't go over two weeks on a remix song. Like, if you're planning to release this remix song because you downloaded the acapella or a stem from somewhere, don't wait two weeks. Just no. Once you pass that threshold of two weeks, then it's pointless at that time because you you want to make it as quick as possible and release it as soon as possible because the song is is still hot and you want to capitalize that momentum and get you know some attraction for it. Two weeks is like your your period. Like this is like how long you actually have to like have to release it. Other than that, don't release it. If you if you're gonna take more than that, like no, just stick with the originals. It's plain and simple. Um, I don't know any other recommendations I can give you other than the ones I've said. Um, I mean those are the basic ones. 
any other suggestions please guys comment down below and let me know what you guys think i'm gonna end this right here with a positive note saying stay the fuck away with remix competitions and just focus your music that's my opinion that's what i feel it should be this is based on my experience if you want to do it do it if you don't that's fine there's nothing wrong about it, but just giving you guys a little guidance. So thank you guys for listening. And remember, every week it's a brand new episode with a brand new topic. So be sure to like and subscribe for your weekly episodes at the Lone Wolf Podcast for SoundCloud, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and also on my YouTube channel at LoneWolfPod.com. That's LoneWolfPod.com. That's just temporary until we get our YouTube channel for more than 100 subscribers. If we get our YouTube channel to more than 100 subscribers, man, then we're going to have our own unique username and it'll be very simple. So help me out. Share this. Pass it to everybody. If you know somebody that, that needs some guidance about becoming an up and comer, remits or originals and whatnot, hey, share this. Share this uh, to your to your homie, to whoever you know, you know, just sh spread it around, man. We need to grow this community together. So thank you guys for tuning in and see you guys in the next one. Deuces.